Due to their sense of smell, dogs are an excellent weapon for police officers in the fight against crime. But these dogs are not just a tool in an officer's arsenal. There is a special bond between them. Near the Bakersfield Police Pistol Range, training is intense for police canines. Officers want controlled aggression from the dogs when they are in a real life situation. A lot of times, just the presence of the police car with canine unit on the side and the potential of the dog barking in the back is enough to quell the, uh, the problem so they, um, or at least get people to cooperate with, with law enforcement. Before their shift, Officer Molly Hessler lets her dog Carson play. Then she grooms him and checks his paws. I just want to make sure that he hasn't torn anything, he doesn't have any sores. Carson is specifically trained to be a narcotics dog. With playtime over, it's time to hit the road. We do come across cocaine. Heroin is also big. Really? I mean, yes, all of them. Not long after Officer Hessler is on the road, she puts Carson into action. Good boy, ready? Find it. Good. Check. Good boy. Good boy. Check, check. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Come here. Hey, hey. No. And he's successful in locating the drugs. Commands are often issued in foreign languages. So suspects cannot fool the dogs, who are constantly tested on their ability to catch criminals. During a training mission, as an officer hides in one of the boxes. Show yourself. Show yourself, guy. Since he picked the right box, he's rewarded with a chew toy. If a suspect turns violent or tries to flee, the dogs must be trained on how to catch them. And a dog. Here goes the dog. Yeah, he's not going to last long like that. Using a bite sleeve. So the dog, in in their mind, is thinking that I'm going after this toy, this bite suit, and or the sleeve when we send the dog after a person. Two commands are usually issued for a suspect to surrender before the dog is released. Officer Hessler, this is her dream assignment. Some people want to be motor cops and some people want to be SWAT. This was the only... I wanted to be a canine handler before I became a police officer. She often refers to Carson as her tool to fight crime. He's more than just, you know, a tool on your tool belt. It's, you know, he's living, he's breathing, he thinks, he interacts. Um, they do so much. For a tennis ball. <laughs> During the hot months, she has to make sure Carson does not overheat in the car. I mean, if the car shuts down, the air conditioner shuts down, uh, they have alarms that you set at a certain temperature. Once that temperature is reached, it'll drop the windows and some fans that are behind the seats will kick on. Molly deals with the nasty side of drugs on a daily basis and is not shy to express her opinions. People don't realize that drug offenders. It's not just about getting high. They, they need a means to fund their habit. So they're the ones that are breaking into cars, committing burglaries, uh, robberies, credit card fraud. BPD purchases canine dogs from a special breeder, and the dogs live with their handlers, becoming another part of the family. We go through a lot of things with the dog. I spend 40 plus hours a week you know, at work with him. Uh, also, when you're at home, you know, he's always there, so we're always together. He's you know, like a family member to me. The department often lets the dogs stay with their handlers permanently when they become too old for police work. Officer Chad Haskins has special plans for his dog, Rex. He's going nowhere but with me. <laughs> at quitting time, Officer Hessler puts her job into a simple perspective. It makes a fitting end of the day to go home with this guy. Where are you going? You going to leave me? Ready? Load up. Good job. Ride alongs are available to the public. If you'd like to experience one, call police at 326-3884. Paul Harris, 17 News.